Hi, I am Rafael and I am very happy to be participating in this Juliacon edition. I really want to thank the organizers for accepting my proposal. I will tell you today about the Calypso package that I developed with this amazing group of people. I've been very lucky to be able to work with them. Uh, Claudia Artiaco, now a pro uh, postdoc in Ordita, and Professor Giorgio Parisi and Federico Regitersen Sapienza. And well, we developed this package with the idea of producing jam packings in a disordered fashion, as the packing I'm showing here. So you can think of a jam packing as an instance of the sphere packing problem, where you have to place uh, spheres or balls inside a container without overlaps between them. But we want to do this in a disorder array or a disorder configuration, as I'm showing here. Of course, this packing was produced using Calypso. Uh, a nice feature of the Calypso, or the main advantage of Calypso, is that it is able to deal with hard sphere configurations. This is important because, from a numerical point of view, hard spheres are a bit difficult to deal with. So it is a big advance that we have an algorithm that allows us to to produce jam packings of hard spheres. Now the main question is why jamming. And the, the easy answer is because jamming is everywhere. As I am showing here, it is present in grain, this is toothpaste, mayonnaise, shaving foam, vinaigrette, but also in colloids, glasses, and even biological tissues. All of these systems, in some way or another, display jamming phenomenology. So I will refer as uh, to, uh, that a system displays a jam state if all the degrees of freedom of the system are completely blocked or or yes, or frozen essentially due to geometric frustration. And there are different types of jam systems. For instance, this is a, a regular or order packing. This is a disorder one, and this is something in the middle. But as I was mentioning, I will only care about disorder packings and of frictionless sphere. I will neglect the, the effect of, of friction at, at, at all time. And actually, we're not even interested in the full jamming regime, but only in the jamming transition, which is what I'm illustrating in this figure. The jamming point or jamming transition is highlighted by the red square, and as you can see, is the point where particles just begin to touch each other without uh, having any of them any free space to move. Um, the way these systems are described is uh, naturally by the position of each sphere and the diameter of each sphere, and the control parameter that tells you how far from jamming you are is what's called the jamming fraction or sorry the packing fraction or the density this essentially is the amount of volume or the fraction of the volume occupied by the spheres in the in your system divided by the total volume so this is the d dimensional version this would be the volume of a hypersphere in d dimensions of diameter sigma divided by the volume of the of the box and for hard spheres we cannot go beyond the jamming transition, of course, because I will assume that, sphere, that spheres are infinitely rigid, so they can never overlap. And this, is, this makes the problem actually more difficult, because we will only be able to, to reach the jamming density from below, but since hard spheres have this very singular interaction potential, there is no interaction energy, which means that all the energy minimization algorithms that work very well for soft spheres cannot be applied in this case. And this is the reason why we develop our algorithm. The idea is that jamming can be mapped into a non-convex optimization problem, and the non-overlapping constraints that are essential for hard spheres uh, is what make this problem non-convex. However, to, to define these constraints, we, we only care about the geometry of the problem. We don't need to define any energy function or any other type of interaction. Now, the problem is that non-convex problems are hard to solve. So what we do is we linearize the non-overlapping constraints, and in this way, we obtain a linear optimization problem, which is much easier to solve. And the, the idea is that we will get a chain of linear optimization problems, or LOPs, um, and the idea is that the solution of each of these LOPs will be the input of the next instance that will be solved and the solution will be the input of the next instance and so on and so forth and in this way we can approach the solution of the exact problem and a nice feature of this algorithm is that the force balance condition and isostaticity property which are essential to see all the jamming phenomenology in, in physical systems are let's say building features of our algorithm so let me now give you a bit of examples of how you can use Calypso. So let's say this is the showcase of the functionality of the package. 
Uh, this is written in pure Julia and makes use of jump uh, for creating and solving each instance of the jamming LOP. Uh, it consists of a single main function that creatively is called produce jam configuration. Its arguments essentially are the initial positions of the particles and the initial value of the radius or the radii in the case of polydisperse systems that Calypso is also able to, to tackle. Um, and the behavior of this function is easily controlled using keyword arguments, as I will show you in a second. Um, since we are using jump, you can use any solver that is compatible with jump and that is able to solve LP problems. Uh, however, we suggest that you use Gurubi or Heist because they are very precise and very performant, but some other uh, options are available. A nice feature of Calypso is that it's able to produce jump packings in arbitrary dimensions from two uh, and above. And I know that a jump packing in six dimensions sounds very strange, but take my word that for some theoretical arguments, it's important to study these type of systems. And another uh, nice thing is that we can obtain the first magnitudes of all the contacts once you, we reach the jamming point using uh, the dual variables that we're uh, able to uh, access thanks to the jump functionality. And the examples I will uh, show you are these three, so a small configuration of how you can get a, a jump packing in three dimensions from scratch in five lines of code, and then a more realistic example of a larger system and in high dimensions, and then a 2D system with polydispersity. I will change the solver in each instance just to show you how, it is, how easy it is to, to choose the solver, but of course, you can choose one and then uh, for example, Gurubi can, can uh, take care of all of these cases. So, the first example, a small packing, 30, 50 particles of so very small, three dimensions, and a small uh, value of the initial density. So what you do is, you call Calypso, you are suggested that you, you pre-compile the main function because of the time to first solve issue of jump, and then you define the, the, the values of the of your system, the, sorry, the parameters of your system, so the dimensionality, the number of particles, initial value of the density, and the size of the box. Once you do that, you can generate the, a random initial, uh, sorry, a random configuration with these parameters. This will give you the, the corresponding values of the radius, the, the particles position, and then you call the main function. And the output of Calypso, that you can also turn out, but in this case, this is the default behavior, is for each uh, linear optimization, it gives you some information of the optimal value of an inflation factor, that is gamma, and some other properties. And here, as you can see, after some 17 iterations, Calypso converged. It tells you that the final packing is isostatic. It should be that the force balance condition is satisfied with a precision of 10 to the minus 15, so very precise the amount of non rattle particles and some other information, but for instance, the, the, the output is, is a packing, that and this will tell you that it's a 3D monodispersed packing, the number of particles, the radius of each particle, it tells you that it's in mechanical equilibrium, or for instance, you can ask if if this packing is isostatic, and this will be, will give, it is, it's true, it gives you the number of contacts and the number of stable, of, uh, of stable particles, or you can also, for instance, ask the coordination number. And this is an array of how many contacts each particle have. And you can, I mean, there are some other properties you can you can um, access. This other object, also output of the main function, tells you how the algorithm uh, um, performed. So it tells you it converged. It took 17 uh, iterations. This is the time it took in seconds, so it was very fast and some other information. That all of this is explained in the documentation. This other array tells you how the, the inflation proceeded. So at the beginning, it was a larger uh, inflation. One means that the density is, is uh, constant, so you reach the jamming point. So this helps you to, to analyze how the jamming point was, was uh, reached. Now a more realistic example of a, a larger system and, and a better initial configuration. This assumes that, for instance, you run a molecular dynamic simulation and you run it up to a very high pressure and then you use this as the input of, of Calypso. Uh, in this case, it's a thousand particles uh, system in four dimensions. Uh, I am gonna use Gurubi, so this is the, the, the main part. You call Calypso, you call Gurubi. Here you define some properties of the solver, the precision, how many threads you can use, the method you are suggested to, to pre-compile everything. 
and then here we are importing the data of the four dimensional configuration uh, this is the date the, the file where everything is, is uh, contained and importantly in this file I have the position of the particles and I am transforming it into an array of, of uh, static vectors and the, the type of each uh, of this static vector as you can see the dimensionality is containing the type of the static vector four in this case as you can see here and also the type of elements of each of these static vectors is, uh, is a periodic number which means that it will take into account the fact that we are using periodic boundary conditions this is done automatically and once you have this of course you call the same function or another method of the function where once again the dimensionality is inferred from the, from the type of elements and here as you can see in only seven iterations Calypso converges so even though it's a larger system and in, in high dimensions since we are using a better initial con uh, configuration and a better initial condition then Calypso is much faster and it, as you can see you also have a very good precision in the force balance, isostaticity and all of that of course everything is consistent uh, to show you here I'm accessing the set of particles of the packing and I'm choosing the first of them just to show you some properties it tells you it's a four-dimensional monoparticle which means that it comes from a mono dispersed packing it gives you the position of the center the the, num the indices of the particles it is in contact with and the, the, ma uh, the magnitude of the forces the contact vectors as expected are four-dimensional vectors also implemented as a static uh, vectors for, for performance and finally the case of a B dispersed packing uh, with polydispersity, I will use the high solver in this case. Uh, it's going to be an 800 uh, particles, and everything is going to be generated from scratch. So to do that, I'm going to use the distributions package to sample from the log normal distribution. These are the parameters of my system, the dimensions, the number of particles. These control the polydispersity of the system. Here I am importing the high solver once again, defining the, the accuracy of the solver, how many threads I'm going to tell. I'm I'm telling it to parallelize. Um, uh, we suggest that everything is precompiled. Uh, sorry, and here I'm generating the or sampling the radii, and with this function, I am obtaining a random configuration with the given radii in this dimensionality, and here the output is also the the initial packing fraction, and you call another method of the same function because here I'm passing the the set of positions as usual but now this, this second argument is an array uh, so this is another method and note that the, the solver can be passed very conveniently just by keyword arguments these are some other parameters that are that I'm using for this example so you call the main function and here it takes a while about 150 iterations but it converges once again with high accuracy in the first balance I saw statistics and all of that and as you can see, this this packing is a is a two-dimensional polydispersed packing, so another type that is defining Calypso. And with this function, you can access the particle, the pairs of particle in contact, the, the corresponding contact vectors, the corresponding uh, forces magnitude. This is the smallest and the largest value of the of the contact forces in the packing. And with that, you can essentially visualize using your favorite library. So the plotting function is not including Calypso, but all the information you need to visualize this packing is contained in, in the packing uh, generated by Calypso. Uh, and as you can see, you can access the full network of contacts, identify rattlers very easily. And these are just uh, quick examples of what you can do with Calypso. Thank you very much.